So I'm going to do problem 6.61 from Surway and Jewett, uh, 8th edition. The, car, the problem says a car rounds a banked curve. Uh, the ratio or the radius of curvature of the road is R. We have the banking angle, the coefficient of friction. We're supposed to determine the range of speeds that the car can stay on the uh, uh, track at the same level. So I'm going to start off by drawing the banked curve like this. I'll draw a little picture of the car. We're looking at the car from the back like this. So this is like the back windshield here. And the car is going in that direction, going in a gigantic circle here that has a radius of r, big r like that. And uh, we're needed to we're, we're needing to figure out what range of speeds, the maximum speed and the minimum speed that this car can uh, can stay at this exactly the same height here on the incline plane or on the banked curve. So the first thing to do in this kind of problem is to identify the forces on the car. So the forces that we have are going to be the normal force, which points up like this. You've got down here, this is the angle of beta. You also have the friction force. Now we can either find the minimum speed or the maximum speed. Let's first start off by doing the minimum speed. So the minimum speed, we're going to have uh, the friction force pointing up this way. The reason for that, the reason the friction force is going to point this way is because the minimum speed will be the speed such that the car needs to, the, the speed the car needs to have in order to not slip back down the ramp this way, which means the friction force is going to point in the opposite direction to hold the car there. Uh, the next thing to do to analyze this problem is to define uh, an axis. So we're going to define an xy axis here. I'm going to make our axis be like this. This is going to be the x direction to the left. This is going to be the y direction pointing up. I'm going to make the x direction this way because since the car is going around in a circle this way, that means that the net force in the x direction will be equal to mv squared over r because it's undergoing circular motion, staying at the same radius the entire time. Can you imagine? Uh, in the y direction, because the car is because the car is going to stay at the same level, its y its y coordinate won't change at all, and so the change in y will be zero, and then you know the second derivative of y will also be zero. So you get that. Uh, looking at our forces, we have two forces here: this one and this one that we need to break up into components. So let's do that. So we have this one right here, which will break up like this. This angle here is theta, theta, and theta. So we can look at this one right here is going to be fs sine theta. This one right here is going to be fs cosine theta. On the other side, we have the normal force, which we need to break into components as well. So this one's going to have components like this and this. This side over here, we first need to figure out what the angle theta is. Since that's a 90 degree angle, and that's equal to our theta, that means that this is 90 minus theta, which means that this angle up here is theta. Drawing of the car is kind of getting in the way. There's the angle theta is right there. That means that this side here is in cos theta, and this side here is in sine theta. So we get those as our vectors and our forces. Okay, in the x direction, we have two forces. We have this one and this one. So we get right here, because I said this side was positive, in sine theta minus fs cosine theta, like that. In the y direction, we have three forces, this one, this one and this one. So we're going to have because it's all equal to zero, that basically means that the upward forces have to be cancelled out by the downward forces, and so in this case we have this one and this one cancelled out by that one there. Okay, now we need to do something to get rid of that friction force. We know that the friction force is given by mu s times n. So we can replace the friction force here. Same thing right here. Now because both this one and that one have an in and both terms, we can factor that in out. I'm just going to do that by like this. Same thing over here. And then I think the easiest way to do this is you can either solve this one for n, plug it in here, or we can just divide that equation by this equation. I think that's just as easy. So we're going to divide that equation under this one. Alright, and the normal force 
cancel. M will cancel. So since we're doing v min in this case, that's what this one is going to become. So we'll get this. I'm going to move the r and the g to the left side. So we're going to get rg times this big fraction here. find the maximum velocity, the only thing that's going to change is that the friction force is now going to be pointing back in this direction here. And as a result, the direction of this will be here, and the direction of this will be down. And so the only thing that's going to change is that that's going to become a positive, and that's going to become a negative. Okay? So the Vmax are just going to have plus a 